Hello, welcome back to the PLSQL tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we need to know why do I need PLSQL and then we'll define what is PLSQL. All right. So let's take an example. Uh, we have uh, employee table and in our employee table, we have all these 14 rows and let's say 5 columns. And let's say if I ask, ask that if I ask to do raise employees, raise salary by 20% for all employees for all employees. So in that case I just give a simple update statement. I will say update update EMP set sal is equal to 1.2 times sal. Okay. So this update statement is going to update all this employee salary to to 20% more than whatever they are getting right now. But the real life scenario is not like that it will be actually more complicated rules. Let's say, let's think about this kind of rules that, that uh, we, we are, we are going, to, going to abide to increase the salary. Let's say if the job description is manager and if that person has worked more than 10 years, then he will get 50% hike. If he is a manager and he is working from 5 to 10 years, then he'll get 40 percentage hike. Then if it's a manager with less than five years, no hike. If he's an analyst and working in department 20, then get 20 percentage hike and so on the rules can go on. Okay. So in that case, the simple update statement, whatever we did in, in the previous case is not going to work. Right. So if you see the rules, so this rules is nothing but bunch of if and else statements. Right. So you ask yourself right now if you have done the SQL tutorials and and do you find anywhere that you have something like whatever you find in a programming language, full fledged programming language, like a for loop, a while loop, a if and else statements. Are those things are those things available in SQL? The answer is no. So therefore, you know if the rules are like this, then it may not possible to just do using SQL. In that case, I need some some procedural constructs like if, else, like you know, for loop and all this thing. So when I add this procedural construct with the SQL statements, then I get a full fledged langu programming language and that programming language is called PLSQL. Okay. So PL the procedural construct plus SQL together constitute PLSQL. So PLSQL is a, like, unlike SQL which is ANSI, PLSQL is a proprietary language of Oracle Corporation. Okay, And then it has seamless integration of procedural constructs like variables, if, for, while and all this thing. Okay. Even this also supports complicated data structures. Okay. I won't I won't say that it is this PLSQL is something like a full pressure language like C or Java, but it's almost almost it can cover it can it can basically cover a lot of business logic. It can it can help you in, in dealing with those things. Okay, so that is why you need PLSQL. So let's go to the PLSQL environment. Okay, so here is a first example of your PLSQL programming unit where I declare, I, I declare a variable, I, I declare three variables and then here is a first SQL statement. I am selecting width and height from a table T into these two variables and then I am computing the area by multiplying them. Okay, and then I'm printing out whatever the computer value. So if you see in this programming units, so this is these three are PL parts, and this is of SQL, and again this two are PL. Okay, so therefore the PL SQL block consists of both PL and SQLs. Okay, so whenever we are going to give, you know, we're going to run this thing, we're going to run in an environment that is called PL SQL compiler. Okay. or PLSQL engine. So PLSQL engine is going to take the whole block and it will separate the PL parts. So the PL parts is going to a executor called procedural statement executor 
and the SQL parts is going to go to the SQL statement executor in the Oracle server. Okay, and then once this SQL part is got executed and it comes back, and then it will integrate everything, and then the program will complete. Okay, so this is how a PL SQL programming uh, PL SQL compiler works. Okay, this PL SQL engine can happen two places. One is in client side. That means, so let's say, assume so this is the client and this is the database server. Okay, so I can execute, I can have a PL SQL engine in the client side. So in that case, what is going to do? It is going to going to have the PL parts executed in the client, where only the SQL statements are coming to the server, and then gets back to the client. And then client will integrate them and and give the end result. Or else, so this is a scenario one. In the scenario one, the PL SQL engine is in the client side. In scenario two, which is also a very valid scenario, where everything happens inside the database. So that means you write some PL SQL program. That PL SQL program is going to be inside the database, and the PL 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 executor also in the database, and SQL executor also in the database. All right. So that is how scenario two works. Okay. So now let's go through what are the advantages of PL SQL. So number one, it gives you ability to real life programming. That is that consists of uh, as I as I told you in the very first video, uh, sorry in the very first slide, that uh, you know we need some kind of if and else kind of thing, real life programming, real life scenario. Okay. So number two is the tight integration with SQL with SQL so what does this mean is that you do not have to translate between SQL and PLSQL data types right so whatever data types you have understand in SQL that is varchar number so those exactly same data type is going to work in PLSQL okay so there is no need to change or no need to you know there's no s different types of data types in PLSQL okay and what does it means is that it has it is going to this integration is going to save you both learning time and processing time okay and another advantage of you know in the variable is that you can define a variable of some some you know some item type of the, of the table let's say I have a table T so my, I'll take an example of employee employee and then I have salary which is a number filled in the employee table then I can also declare a variable like this a as employee percentage sal that means what I'm saying is that whatever the column type of salary in employee table this variable is of same type this thing is going to determine at the runtime. At the compile time, I don't know. At the runtime, the PL SQL programming unit or the PL SQL executor is going to figure out what is the column type of this employee and whatever data type it is, it will assign to that. So in this case, it will be assigned a as a number because salary is a number. Okay. Number three is full portability. So what does it mean by that? So let's say I have an Oracle database which is running on Windows 2008. And I wrote that PL SQL program like this. Okay. So this PL SQL program I wrote on a machine with Windows 2000 Oracle database. And so this is my block, PL SQL block. Then I wrote something here, right? Exactly same thing will work on another Oracle database which is installed on Linux okay so you don't need to modify anything on the PL SQL block you just take that one and then you compile on this Linux machine and provided that you have already installed Oracle server and you should be fine okay so that is called full portability that means you write the code once it is going to run on any Oracle platform independent of the operating system and all this thing number four is 
access to predefined packages. So what Oracle does to make this thing highly productive so that you can develop access to predefined packages. So what Oracle does in order to basically so that now in order to make the developer productivity they have already given you a lot of libraries, lot of functionalities, lot of packages so that you can use those packages and build application quickly. Okay, so for example, one of the example is dbms underscore lob. So dbms underscore lob is going to give you all the packages, all the func functions, procedures required to write a multimedia application where including image processing, file processing, and all this thing. Another package comes to my mind is called utl underscore http. utl underscore http package is going to do a lot of web-based application development easy. So using those packages from utl underscore http, you can create a application very quickly. Number five is tight security. So the tight security means like this, tight security. So let's say this is the Oracle database and I have this program unit, right? So this program unit or I call PLSQL block. So let's call it PLSQL block. PLSQL block is basically a text file where you have written something PLSQL programming language, right? What you can do, you can put this thing inside, you can create a procedure or function or package inside a database. So once it's inside a database, whatever types of user access controls are available for other objects like table, synonyms, the same thing also applicable for these packages, these functions and all those things. Okay, so therefore, you don't have to worry about anything. You just use the security mechanism inside the Oracle database if you put your PLSQL block to run inside the database. Number six is better performance. So what is my better performance? Let's say we are like in this, in our case, let's say this scenario, somehow we solve this thing using only SQL. Let's say we wrote for that five SQLs. In this case, we'll write this, we'll, we'll execute this five, we'll fire this five SQLs one at a time. That means SQL number one goes from the client to the server and run. SQL number two goes from client to the server, three goes from client to the server, so on. So what we have, so this is a database server, right? So what we have, there is a time in the network. Okay, so the network time is going to be consumed for these five SQLs. However, if I write only one PLSQL block and send that one at a time, then all this PLSQL block will be transported once and will be executed in the Oracle uh, server and, and, and the results got back. I, I get back the results. So in that case, it's only one round trip. So always five round trips are less performing than one round trip. So basically we are going to save a lot of time on the performance. Okay, number seven is that rapid web application development. So Oracle is comes up with a new tool called Apex, Oracle Application Express. Using Oracle Application Express, you can complete a end-to-end -end web application development using the latest web.2.0 using Ajax and all this thing with less than 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes you can develop a end-to-end -end working application with high securities with logins and all this thing just less than 10 minutes by using the Apex libraries inside which is which comes as a part of Oracle uh, Apex uh, development toolkit. Thank you.